Another tool we have for monitoring our SQL Server is the Extended Events. Now, Extended Events is a replacement for SQL Server Profiler. And the SQL Server Profiler is still around. In fact, if you come up to Tools, you can find... There we go. SQL Server Profiler. I looked down too far. It's right there. You can find the SQL Server Profiler. Now, that has been marked as deprecated since 2012, so that means Microsoft hasn't taken it out. That's not what it means. It means they're no longer adding to it. Instead, they're doing everything using extended events. So if you click on Management and come down to Extended Events, you'll see here are extended event logs. Now, these extended events are defined in sessions, and we have a couple of them that are currently running. And then we have this one right here, Always On Health. You'll notice that even though it's called Always On, it's currently turned off. And that's what that little red square there is. So that session is not running at the moment. The system health one and the telemetry events actually are. So let me expand this out a little bit. And you can see here in system health, we're tracking the event file and the ring buffer and in telemetry events. So I can view these by right clicking and clicking on watch live data. And this will actually show me live data. Now you're probably not going to see a whole lot of live data because this is an isolated system and I don't have people using it at the moment. But you'll see we do have a few things here and you can look down and see the field uh, or the field name and the value of the events that have been captured by this uh, by the session. Now, the always on health, let's go ahead and expand that. So we have a package event file. If I want to activate this, I'll right click and start session. Now, one of the big advantages of extended events over profiler, what it replaced, is that it is far less resource intensive. So it's with SQL Server Profiler, you can build profiles, you can do great things with it. You can track information, you can integrate it with performance monitor information, you can synchronize data, I and mean, it's, it's a great tool, but it's very resource intensive. The sessions for extended events are not nearly as resource intensive. Now again, I can watch live data, and again, you're probably not going to see a whole lot here. I can also generate reports off of my data. Okay, now these are some predefined uh, event sessions. Now you can define your own. I'm going to go ahead and close this real quick and stop that session. Now I can create my own session and there's a couple of different ways to do it. So I can right click and create a new session or a new session wizard. And the wizard is just going to kind of walk me through creating a new session. So let's take a look at this real quick. I'm going to put the session name. I'm going to call this test because I don't feel very creative. I have the option to start the event session at server startup. <clears throat> I don't want to. I can use specific templates or not use a template. If I use a specific template, I can look at several different templates that we have here and use that template as a basis for this uh, particular session. Or I can generate my own. So I'm going to go ahead and count current logs. And we'll click Next. Select events to capture. Now it already has a, some of these predefined. So at the moment it's got the logs acquired. Now we're going to come back to this not exactly the screen, but the same information here in a few minutes. Uh, notice, by the way, I can just go ahead and finish it at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish, and we'll look at the rest of the details when we look at creating one without the wizard. So I'll click Close, and I now have my session, which then I can start session and watch live data if I want to take a look at the live data. Again, we're not going to get anything off of here. So when I am done with it, I can stop the session, and then I can just leave that predefined here, and I can come back and reopen that whenever I want. If I really don't want to deal with it, I can right-click and delete to get rid of it and just make it go away forever. Okay, so I have those predefined uh, templates I can work with. 
in the wizard. I can also start a new session outside of that wizard. And this is going to give me a little more control. So I'm going to type, we're going to call this test2. Now, again, I have templates that I can use if I want to. And you'll see a few of them listed here. So let me go ahead and do the account query locks because, you know, that's what we did before. I can start it at server startup, start it immediately after session created, watch live screen on data as it is captured. All of these are checkboxes. I can choose whether I want them or not. Now, the events page, and I said we we're going to come back to this. This is our events page. <clears throat> Now we have bunches of events here. So to filter those down, there are a couple of things you can do. You can search for them. I'm going to do a search for backup. And you'll see here some uh, backup options. I can also, that's searching in the event names, I can also filter it by category or by channel. So let me filter down to, I'm going to unselect all of that and I'm going to choose backup and restore as a category and there is my backup and restore progress trace now if I decide if I see one of these either by filtering or by searching or just by scrolling if I decide that I want to use it I can add it to my selected events using this arrow button or by double clicking either one of them will work now, for every one of these that you do, you need to make sure that you can configure that you configure it. So, with that selected, I'm going to click on configure, and this shows me the data that I can gather. So, I have global fields, and then I have event fields. So, I want my global fields. I want to capture the database ID. I want to capture the database name. Notice up here as I select these, I'm choosing actions. So, global fields right here, actions. Um, yeah, let me just leave it at those two at the moment. I can set a filter if I want to. Click here to add a clause to my filter and or and then what I want to look, what field I want to look at, what operator I want and what value. So I can specify just filtering out specific information that I want to see. And then event fields. If there is a checkbox over here, that means I can choose that event field. Otherwise, these are just going to come across. Let me look at the locks acquired here. And here you'll see we're going to capture all of these. And I also can choose to capture my resource description and my database name. Okay. Now, once I've done, I can then go back here and select another event. Uh and you know add more events to it the data storage shows where i'm actually going to store this information so right now i have a histogram i can add an additional target and i can save it to a file or ring buffer or i can use pair matching which means when i like if i have a start and a stop event you know start transaction commit transaction once they match it will remove both of them i can choose in any type of storage here that I want. Event file will let me set the file name that I want it to go to, the maximum file size, whether I want it to roll over. So I can control where I want my data to be captured to. And then in the advanced, we have a maximum dispatch latency. In other words, how long from the time that the event happens until I record it. Um, maximum amount of size I can use in memory. And then here, the event retention mode. So basically, if I lose a single event, will it keep working? Can I support using multiple events? Um, the no event loss, not recommended, actually creates problems if a single event gets lost and doesn't show up in your event tracking log. Once I'm happy with all of my settings, I just click OK. And that now generates my second uh, test in my test two, uh, second session in my extended events. And like we did before, I can start this event, let it run, and unlike the SQL Server Profiler, I can actually let it run for an extended period of time. The recommendation with the SQL Profiler is definitely don't run it more than two hours. With this, you saw we had ones that would start up automatically and could keep running the entire time. And that's fine.
It just depends on what you're tracking. Now, if you track everything, obviously it's going to be way more processor intensive. It's going to use up way more resources. It's going to use up way more storage. So you want to be careful about this and using this, you basically want to trace the events or track the events that are going to matter for what you're trying to troubleshoot at the moment. But you can be a little more liberal with that than you could with SQL Server Profiler. So there is a quick overview of using the extended event system in SQL Server.